They played this one on the road at Ames. Sean Sutton, the alley-oop to Randy Davis, who jams it in. And Johnny Orr's team down 18 at halftime. Iowa State then down by two. Final seconds of the game. Justice Thigpen drives to the hoop and ties it. And that forces overtime for Eddie Sutton. And the Cyclones down by two in the final seconds of OT. The pass down low to the freshman, Fred Holberg. And he gets the hoop and some harm with nine seconds to play. The Cyclones had an 84 to 83 lead. Cowboys had a chance to win it with 2.4 seconds left. But Darwin Alexander missed both free throws. And the Cyclones ran out of time as they pulled out the victory. Johnny Orr said in 42 years of coaching, he's never seen a better comeback as the Cyclones. They always play Syracuse tight. Elmer Bennett with the windmill move had 22 points. The Irish leading by six. Great rejection from LaFonso Ellis and Damon Sweet with a jam. And Jim Beheim, I uh, hate when that happens. The Orange come back, though. Dave Johnson, a pump fake, and shoots over LaFonso Ellis and gets that to go. But here comes revenge. Ellis just slapping Conrad McRae and gets it out of here. Irish up seven in the second half. A little showtime. Ellis with a slam. He had 28 points. And Notre Dame wins it at zero seconds. And Michigan State gets a break ahead of the pack. Mark Montgomery scores easily. They've got the big lead. The game should have been in hand, but Matt Stegingen with the uh, steal off the inbounds. And then Montgomery paid the price. Juwan Howard with the fragrant foul. There's debris coming out of the stands. These two teams tried to intimidate each other when they met before. Michigan State got the best of it because they won the game. And the Michigan Wolverines blew a 13-point lead. It's the first time that the Fab Five have lost. And it's Baby Jordan, Harold Miner, with the southpaw shot. He didn't see it, but it was two of his 30 on the day. Oregon State, Scott Haskin answering, and he gets it to rattle home. Trojans had a one-point lead at the half. George Raveling's team was in for a hard afternoon. Leroy Jackson inside. They just couldn't contain Haskin, who follows his own shot, puts it home. He had 33. The Beavers blow him out. Nitro Mark in jeopardy. Perry Clark Club in Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. The Hokies' Thomas Elliott had 22. Then he blocks Kim Lewis. Get it out of here. Steve Hall takes it up court. He's looking for Jay Purcell. A nice pass to him in the green wave. So for their first conference loss, 89-73, to 73, they were not happy about it. LSU had yet to lose on the road in the SEC. Bruce Elder of Bandy hits the three. Shaquille O'Neal tries to do something about it. Look at this pass. Spotting Vernell Singleton. He had 24, but O'Neal had just 10. And Vandy was bombing from outside. Kevin Anglin had 21. Vandy knocks him off. It's the third straight Tiger loss, 76 to 69. South Florida against number 22, UNC Charlotte. Running, good to Bras. His masterpiece, the threes. He had 28 points. White, McCullers with the basketball. But Duke's Thomas Hill is right there. Hill comes up with a steal. He'll go to Grand Hill. Grand Hill down the lane, up high on the jam. Duke led 36 to 31 at the half. Talk about good basketball. By the way, Grand Hill would lead with 20 points. He would lead everybody in this game. Second half, NC State, man, did they get hurt by turnovers. Mark Davis saves it. We're right to Grand Hill, to Brian Davis. Davis with a jam. NC State coach Les Robinson. Is this a man? He says, you know, he turns around and says to his assistants, do we realize we're supposed to be trying our own baskets? I mean, you know, why are we letting them score at all? More turnovers. Thomas Hill this time will get the loose basketball. He'll go ahead to Brian Davis. Davis with a running one-handed jam. Number one ranked Duke Blue Devils knock off North Carolina State 71 to 63. A long and rough day for Coach Robinson. Meanwhile, let's move to Norman, Oklahoma. Big 8 basketball, Kansas State in blue. Inbound pass, knocked loose, sets off a wild scramble. First, that, now you've got it. Whoops, who's got it? Everybody. Finally, Brent Price, the Damone Patterson. On the jam, Oklahoma was on a roll. Oklahoma's Bryant Van comes up with a neat steal here. This is just clean pickpocket. Oh, that's nice. Get the loose basketball. Bryant Van in on the jam. Oklahoma rolls over Kansas State. Looking to go up by four, David Booth swats Brian Hopgood's pass and Terry Davis. The feed to Booth, the hoop and the foul. Three minutes to go. Louisville attacks. Everett Sullivan, the miss. Cornelius Holden there for the putback. Louisville down by three. Terry Davis misses the jumper. Stephen Howard gets the ball, takes it away from two Cardinals, and DePaul holds on to win it by a three-point margin, 84-81. to 81. Facing off, it was all Hardaway. Drives down the lane and right over the spoon. 
Tigers by 16 at the break. Hardaway with the dish to Billy Smith. Memphis State led by as many as 27. More Hardaway. Shake, bake, take the hoop, the kiss off the glass, and you do not mess with this Tiger. At least this afternoon you did. As after making their first three attempts, the Panthers just went to Brick City. They could not hit a shot. Missing inside, missing outside. Paul Evans watched his club miss, count them, 21 shots in a row. That is uh, not good. Meanwhile, Luther Wright, good with the block, and then at the other end, loose for the reward. 35-16, Hall at the half, and Sean Miller doesn't want to watch. Brian Caver to Gordon Winchester with a big league slam on the Pirates, lopsided, and they win their fifth. Talking about where he might be coaching next year. Rebels out and running, Melvin Love to Deedon Thomas. And the outlet to J.R. Ryder. And he looked like the same old Rebels. Elmore Spencer is the Tark and his Rooters rooting on his team. Ryder with two of his 23. And he's, he looks more and more like Yoda every time I see him. The Rebels have the longest winning streak, at least at home. And Peeler strips the ball and then takes it all the way for the dunk. Had 24 in the first half, 34 in the game. Peeler got help from Melvin Scooter Booker off the inbound pass. He twists and a hoop and some harm, and Scooter is uh, knocked off his wheels. But Jackson didn't know it, but he'd be in for a career low. Second half, Val Barnes of Iowa makes the nice baseline move. Iowa by 15, that's right, 15 points. Then A.C. Earl hits the jumper down low, two of his 20. For Ohio State, Lawrence Funderburg with the finger roll. Buckeyes pulled it within six. He had 16 points, and the Buckeyes pumped up. They think they can come back. But Earl, look at the nice awareness to find Chris Street down low. Street had 14. You want more Hawkeyes? Well, let's go to James Moses, who did a nice defensive job on Jim Jackson and had 21 points on the offensive end. Hawkeyes by 10. What kind of a night was it for J.J.? That kind of night. What kind of a night was it for the Buckeyes? That kind of night. Funderburg misses the dunk, and the Hawkeyes Bannon, the touchdown pass and the conversion. Bruins by nine at the half. But the Bears wouldn't go away. Lamont Murray, the reverse layup around cousin Tracy, who shows his frustration. Jim Herrick not showing any frustration yet. But five minutes left. Lamont Murray dunks. He had 23 points. The Cal Bears within one. 71-70. Next trip down. Cousin Tracy, only three of ten on the night for 13 points, but he makes that big one. Lou Campanelli says you gotta stop him, guys. Don McLean, 25 points, the Bruins by seven, and they go on to win it 82-76. Georgia moving it around well to Orlando Bennett, who got Georgia to within two points. He had a heck of a game. Latero Green passes to Bennett underneath, who gets two more, and the Bulldogs actually out in front in front of the home folks in Athens. Then Bennett on his own, a great pump fake, gets a hoop and some harm. He had a career-high 18 points. And then toward the end of the game, Latero Green finishing it off. A little icing here. He had 30 points, and the Bulldogs with the upset. Todd Day had 24 in a losing effort. Lee Mayberry. Furious looks like Louisville's Brian Hopgood was out of bounds, but play continues. Kip Stone finding Dwayne Morton for the slam. VCU comes right back, though. Tyron McCoy to Ron Ladd to Sharon Mills for the slam. But VCU still down by 16 at the half, and more Louisville in the second half. Dwayne Morton, the big two-hander. Louisville goes on to win it easy. With a minute left, but Rex Walters drives in for the lab. Kansas is within one. Then the game was tied. Danny Nee was seeing a bad tie and seeing things get worse. Seven seconds left. The block by Rex Walters. Alonzo Jamison is heading towards the goal. You see the clock. Bruce Chubik ran the floor, got the block, and we're going to overtime. In the extra session, Roy Williams couldn't believe there was no foul. Adonis Jordan hits the three, and the Jayhawks were up four. 20 seconds left in overtime. Chris Cresswell got a bomb, and the Mad Bomber for about 24 knocked down three. The lead was one. Kansas missed six consecutive free throws. Nebraska had a plan for the last shot. One second left. The inbounds to Jamar Johnson with a big guy in his face. Fading, he hit the game winner. And they go Looney and Lincoln. Danny Nee called it Husker Magic. Roy Williams said we stunk it up. Slide at Georgetown. That was a missed shot by Alonzo Mourning. He'll hustle the floor. But he fouls Scott Borrello, hit the hoop for the Huskies. Game was tied at 30 at the half. Alonzo determined to start the second half. It was a Hoya 12-0 run. Watch Morning reject the Smith shot. And then keep it in play. Joey Brown, Robert Churchwell, 
Hoyas lead 42-30. The Huskies and Jim Calhoun storm back. Here's Smitty. The strong drive to Morning. Past Morning. It was 56-53. Game tied 58. 14 seconds left. UConn ball. Mike Gorman has the exciting call at the end. Finds Burrell. Burrell skips it to Fair, who loses it. Joey Brown's going to have time. And Joey Brown hits the layup to win the game. Brown said he thought about the jumper. He went to the hole, made the biggest play of his career. And John TB down 11 at the break, but second half accused were on Dave Johnson. Inside the jam, Lawrence Moten, the freshman with the three. Then Adrian Autry, the miss, but Conrad McRae soars and slams, and the Orange lead by one. Redmen keep coming back, though. Derek Brown, the miss. Malik Sealy, the turnaround jumper. Then Chucky Sproling hit the three as time started running down. Jason Buchanan, a Syracuse native, to Sproling, and the Redmen lead by one. A minute left, Moten, the freshman, comes back, puts Syracuse on top. 12 seconds left after a near Moten steal. Sproling hits the big jumper. Redmond up by one. Closing seconds. Moten can't hit a three. McCray, the desperation fadeaway. Another buzzer beater goes to the home team. Yeah, Malik Sealy, reason to scream. The Redmond one by one. The team needed to win. The Virginia coach and Anthony Oliver. Ted Jeffries with a pretty lay-in. The Cavs are out to a 13-point lead on ACC Big East Wednesday on ESPN. Eric Montrose hits the board with a one-hand slam. Virginia lead by 10 at the break. Bryant Stith was there for the Cavs. Four on one, he finishes with a jam. Two of his 30. Carolina tried to come back, they got close. But freshman, Junior Burrow, it's the tough baseline jumper, and Dean Smith can only watch as the Cavs would celebrate a 13-point win over North Carolina. Stith at 30, another freshman, Corey Alexander, at 24, hosting Oklahoma. Three minutes to go, it's Brent Price knocking down the three. Trouble for the Cowboys, Byron Houston with the ball. Comes down, sprains his left ankle, would not return. 45 seconds left in the game. It's back to Price, and the Price is right with the jumper. That's a two-pointer. Sooners lead by three. Eddie Sutton had a diagram, a game winner. Closing seconds for the home team. Corey Williams to Binky Triplet. No, short. Still, the Cowboys had a shot with two seconds left. Billy Tubbs, uh, not going with the suit, was intense. How about one more try? Binky is wide open for three to tie. Not going to happen. It was short. Darwin Alexander, who scored 24 in the first meeting. Why do we put that warning? This is why. It was ugly for Michigan State. Hoosier shot 69% in the first half. Damon Bailey shut out in Michigan's earlier loss to, or rather, Indiana's earlier loss at Michigan State. Bailey, no, he had 24 points in this one. Goes to Graham, who had 22 points. Hoosier's up 29 at the half. That was Calvert Cheney on the alley-oop, two of his 13. Judd Heath goes, hey, wait a minute, what happened? We beat these guys by 16 in Lansing. Bobby Knight says, yeah, you beat us by Schumacher Arena, better known as the Shoe. DePaul up early, Jeff Stern the slam. But Anthony Buford would come back for the Bearcats. He hits the three at a game-high 22, and Bob Huggins' team was hanging in there. Second half more of the same, they took a big lead. Terrence Gibson the hoop. Bearcats up 11 at home with 6.25 left, but defense by DePaul. Howard Nathan playing on two bad ankles. The steal, David Booth, the layup. DePaul turned over Cincinnati on five consecutive possessions down the stretch. DePaul up two last second. Chance to win. Nick Van Exel has the ball knocked away again. Stephen Howard recovers it, and DePaul wins by two. 71-69 snaps a Bearcat eight game. In the first half, UCLA on a turnover here. Adam Keefe, a little give and go, and then he slides it through. He had 18 in the second half, but this was the Tracy Murray show. Don McLean to Murray over Brett Williams, a hoop and some harm. UCLA wins easy cleanup against the Terps. Grant Hill to Christian Leitner. He had 30 points and eight rebounds. Duke up six at the break. Late second half, Walt Williams on the bench after fouling out with 26, and the Duke fans celebrating early. Kevin McClinton pulls up jumper. Maryland goes up one. Duke had the ball, 25 seconds to play. He misses. Antonio Lang follows with a slam. Duke takes the lead. Then five seconds left. Thomas Hill on the line. He can make it a three-point game. He misses. So Maryland rebounds. Still has a chance to at least win it with the three. But Evers burns. Let's it get away. And Arizona State first half. Mario Bennett with a slam. Stayed up by five at the break. Mario Bennett from Denton High School in Texas, second half, another steal and slam. He had five block shots, 35 points, and on this save, they're going to throw it down for the freshman, Mario Bennett. State had a seven-point lead late in the second half. Off the miss, Bennett with one of his 11 rebounds helps the Sun Devils out to a sizable lead, and they hang on as Bennett caps off the evening, a career night with the stuff. 
ASU wins a look at the Sun Devil fans in Tempe go gaga. They rushed the floor like it was the final four. Berkeley, it's a blowout at the sports arena. Off the mark, Boyd miss. It's a major deal. Harold Miner had 35 Thursday night. Also some help from Dwayne Cooper. Coast to coast on the West Coast. Cooper for two of his 18, and USC wins by 13. Remember, Cal. Ben, nice defense coming up by LaFonzo Ellis as he blocks Rodney Zimmerman and runs the floor well, taking the pass from Damon Sweet and stuffing it through the hole. And Notre Dame was looking good. Don McLean stripped in the lane. And Damon Sweet with the foot speed picks it up, outraces the defense, hangs and goes to the left hand and got the roll. 20 points, 25 points for Sweet. Tracy Murray, 20 points for the Bruins. That bucket there tied, uh, put UCLA up by a deuce. But the Irish would pull away with their half-court execution. Lafonso Ellis up top, jams it through, two of his 22, and the celebration is on. The Irish have now knocked off Southern Cal, Syracuse, North Carolina, and now UCLA. He lost to rival NC State, and Carolina on top early, thanks to Hubert Davis, had five three-pointers, 30 points for the game. Dean Smith and company led by as many as a dozen in the first half, but NC State rallied. Kevin Thompson takes the pass from Donnie Seal. Career high, 29 for Thompson. It was tied at 77. NC State was down by two, a minute 40 to go, but there's Mark Davis. His seventh three-pointer of the game gives NC State the lead for good, and yeah, you can relax, Les Robinson. His team shot Hatton seven seconds before the half. The miss, the rebound coming up by Vincent Jackson. The referee's going to give him three points. He hit it at the buzzer, but it should have been two. Nonetheless, the Cats up six at the break. Vincent Jackson at the top of the key, finding a ski Jones and ski for three. And that tied the game at 52. Seven seconds left. The score was 52 apiece. Rex Walters gets it over to the sophomore. Steve Woodbury faking, leaning, and hitting at the buzzer. KU escaped with a tough one on the road. And Woodbury was chewed out by Coach Williams at halftime, but responded to Alabama, and this was far from a yawner. Warren Lynn, what a story. He scored a career-high 22 points. He was unconscious from three-point land. He buried... Five on the day, and Lynn, appropriately enough, sporting the jersey number three. Lynn up ahead to Todd Day. Nice catching ability, the hang time, and the body control. Razor backs by one, and they were going ape in the stand. And then Day wanted the ball and got it in the closing seconds. The sweet kisser off the glass, and yeah, giving him A for performance, because Arkansas holds back the Bama's uh, late rally. And Winston Town, well, Chris Smith made sure it didn't continue and it was the Chris Smith show look at the weaving ability the body control that put him at 2,000 points for his career and he got a standing O in stores Smith would become UConn's all-time leading scorer with that three-pointer he finished the evening with 32 and it got so bad for Providence that the Huskies had a three on O break here in the second half and Scott Burrell says thank you very much Jim Calhoun's team was impressive they finally snapped their five-game conference losing skid Smith now